All right, good morning. I think we got the mic figured out, so uh, hopefully we'll roll smoothly here. Uh, for the formation, uh, you guys can stand at ease. Uh, I promise I won't be that long, but I want you guys stand in there, parade rest, and falling out on me. So we don't do formations very often at DPAA. Admiral Paparo, Mrs. Paparo, uh, and family, uh, thank you for joining us today, uh, giving us the gift of your time. Uh, to some of our alums, I see Johnny Webb, and to our VSOs, uh, distinguished guests, thank you so much uh, for being here and joining us. And to the DPA family here, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, on April 7th, 2001, we lost the lives of not just seven service members, but nine VNO, the Vietnam Office for Seeking Missing Persons, who support this mission for the last 38 years. It's a good time to just honor their sacrifice. And I'm taken to a Proverbs that says, take steadfast love and faithfulness and bind it around your neck and etch it on your heart. That's what these service members and these Vietnamese officials did. Uh, going out to recover our missing service members from the Vietnam War with sacrifice, courage, commitment, steadfast love. It's just uh, one thing that I think from this tragedy, tragedy that we learned is what we need to do to ensure the safety of our teams. We, we send teams out. Every mission that we have is a live fire mission. We are sending teams to 16,000 foot mountains in the Himalayas, rice paddies, mountains, cliffs throughout Southeast Asia. The underwater missions off the coast of PNG throughout the Indo-Pacific and we still send teams out to the battlefields of World War II in Europe. And day in and day out you guys are doing that exact thing, taking out Steadfast love, courage, commitment to never leave a fallen service member behind. I can think of no other mission as noble and honorable as what we do here, day in and day out. I'm getting emotional here. <laughs> I didn't even know these guys, but I know they are just like you. Day in and day out, our detachments, our civilians, our, our counterparts, and we're going into countries, we face the forces of nature, sometimes earthquakes in PNG, uh, cliffs in Laos. We face torrential downpour, leeches, uh, you name it. Uh, our teams are going through and, and doing those things. So as we today honor their service and their sacrifice, I just uh, want to tell you that I thank you guys for what you do. I thank you for your commitment uh, and your dedication to never leave a service member behind, to keep that promise. And not only for the Vietnam War, which is our operational priority, but for our World War II, our Korean War, our Cold War, and the first Gulf War losses that we are seeking. So thank you for what you do day in and out. This is probably one of my last ceremonies as the Deputy Director for Operations here. Uh, and I can't think of a more fitting way to tell you guys how humbled and honored I've been to be able to serve you in this, in this capacity, on this mission. And I appreciate what you do and uh, keep going at it. I will tell you that what we have learned from this tragedy is we do CARB inspections. We make sure that our helicopters that we put our service members and our partners on meet airworthiness standards based on those inspections. Every mission that goes out has a uh, risk assessment. The team leaders, the planners, the team sergeants identify the risks that we are exposing our service members to and do everything they can to mitigate those risks before we even send a team out to the field. Those risks are approved, the mitigation of those risks are approved by our regional directors, uh, both Europe Mediterranean and Indo-Pacific. So we are doing our very best to ensure that we are setting you up for success and to ensure your safety and security day in, day out, 
because the last thing we want to do is have another incident where we lose your life seeking to recover uh, those who gave the last full measure of devotion in service to their country. It's something we will continue to do. We do it at risk because that's what sets us apart, I think, as a nation and as a human race. We go out, we never leave a service member behind. And we will continue that effort with steadfast love, faithfulness, and your commitment to duty. Thank you very much. All right, I know we have some uh, JPAC alumni that were here uh, and know these uh, men personally. So if you want, uh, we want to give you an opportunity uh, to step forward, say a few words, um, if you'd like to add anything. All right, Dr. John Bird, our laboratory analysis director. I, uh, good morning, and thanks for coming out to recognize all of our friends. And I will recognize Mr. Webb and Steve Thompson over there, who I know were also around with us back at that time. Uh, yeah, I knew a lot of, of the guys that were involved. Uh, we were in the laboratory. We were still high at the time, which meant we were mostly the scientist in the 92 mics is mostly what made up still high. Mr. Webb was one of the leaders of the organization. And because of that, we were most close with Sergeant Murphy. You know, he was a, had been a team sergeant. A lot of our scientists deployed with him to the field. And he had a reputation for being highly competent and always on top of what he was doing. And so uh, that was a, a terrible loss uh, for us uh, when we lost Sergeant Murphy. Uh, Colonel Corey was the DET-2 commander. Colonel Martin was the incoming. We didn't know him. Uh, he was new coming in from Fort Bragg. But Colonel Corey was somebody who had, was coming to the end of his two-year uh, tour and we had worked with him as a deck commander uh, all that time, and, and he was very popular with us, with us civilians. Um, we liked him very much. You know, as deck commanders came and went over the years, some of them you could kind of forget <laughs> happily, and others you do remember for being really easy to work with and being great at facilitating the work we were trying to do in the field. And, and Colonel Corey, was a very popular deck commander with the scientific staff and I think with the teams in general. And so he was missed. Um, I did not know personally a lot of the other uh, service members. They were assigned to the JTFFA and they were analysts and did other functions and I didn't interact with them a whole lot. Uh, but uh, what I do know is that all of them were valued and all of them were sorely missed by their colleagues uh, after the incident. And, you know, it was a, an accident, um, didn't, didn't come from neglect or safety problems or anything like It was an accident that could happen, you know, to anyone at any time. It just goes to what Colonel Brannon was saying with the risk that we take sometimes with the mission that we're doing. Um, it's just an unfortunate accident, but, uh, but I will say that the, the people we lost, um, the people that I worked with and knew, were outstanding uh, people. They did excellent work, and, and I would agree with Colonel Brandon, they're just like you guys. Um, I see with a lot of you, uh, you're just like Sergeant Murphy. You know, he was always on top of his game. Again, very professional very easy to work with, very adaptable to things we encountered in the field. And a lot of you are, are just the same. And, uh, you know, hopefully we won't ever have to do this again for anyone else. But, uh, but I'm very grateful to all of you for coming out here to recognize our colleagues and friends. And uh, 
does bring back a lot of memories uh, for me, and I'm sure it does for a couple of others as well, but uh, thank you very much. This is star 11. I didn't want to speak first because I'm a little emotional. <laughs> um, I was a joint task force member. Uh, Joel Patterson was one of my bosses back then. Been here since then. Um, I will tell you, I did know the analysts. I work with them. I'm here because of Steve Mosier. He encouraged me to be here. Encouraged me to take that step out and... Um, being the Joint Task Force, I had to learn a lot and put myself in situations I had never been in before because I was an Air Force Airman, very young Air Force Airman. So um, air assault school repelling, <laughs> these things were not something I was used to. Um, but I did it and because of them, I had the privilege when I moved into operations of actually hiring Murphy's cousin, Murph. <laughs> and. Um, just like his cousin, he was a super hard worker, amazing individual, and we were so blessed to have him on our team. And um, he carried that legacy as our air operations officer. And um, But because of them, we're, we are doing things better and more efficiently, safely. And um, I'm just, I'm really proud to have been able to be part of their legacy. Um, not only that, those two organizations, Silhai and JPAC, this is one of the catalysts that helped us start determining that we needed to become a joint organization, become JPAC and work together. And um, so because of that, we became JPAC and now we're here as DPAA and really proud to have been served with all of them. And even the VNO SMP, they, they were very dedicated to our mission and I got to work with a lot of them. So um, if any of you have been to debt too, we actually had a bar in, in, a, in our old debt house called Bien's Bar, named after Colonel Bien. Um, our medical center was named after Gonzalez. So long, long standing legacies of these folks. That's all I have. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Brandon and Sergeant Major Worsley will pay respect to the fallen by placing Leis upon the memorial. Leis are a common symbol of love, friendship, celebration, honor. In essence, a symbol of aloha. In ancient Hawaii, wearing a lei represented wealth, royalty, and rank. At this time, we invite our VSO guests to come forward and place a lay if they desire.
At this time, we will call for a moment of silence to honor the fallen. I would like to thank everyone who made this ceremony a success. This concludes today's ceremony. Mahalo for attending.